These are my top three makeup products in every single category. This is a big undertaking because I test new products every single day. I have quite a large makeup collection. So when it comes to filming this video yearly, I low-key be stressing about it because I'm like, now I have to sort through my babies and pick out the best of the best. I do this video every year, so you guys should check out last year's. There are a good number of similarities to last year's, but there also is some categories that there is none that are the same. But I was looking, everything on last year's list is still amazing. So if you wanna hear about more amazing products, check out last year's. But I'm gonna share with you, of the last year since the last time I filmed that video, what products I'm noticing that I'm reaching for more and what hits my top three in each category. So let's start off with primers. I have three. This first one, of course I have three. Anyways, this first one was in last year's top three. It's the Shantikai Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint. What Shantikai does so well is skincare, and I believe that this is a skincare product that really hydrates the skin before makeup, but also leaves this sheer rose tint to the face that is so beautiful, either on its own with a really light concealer, really light tinted moisturizer, or it just takes over as a skincare product when I put something more full coverage over top. This is one of the most expensive primers in my collection, but I would repurchase this over and over and over again. It's so luxurious, it's worth every penny. The next one I love using all year round, it's from Danessa Myricks. It's the Yummy Skin Glow Serum, and it definitely is an underhyped product and it deserves more love. It smells like cantaloupe, it has a little bit of a sheer golden glow. It's gorgeous on its own if you just want some hydration and glow to the skin, but I find it really does make the skin more glowy with whatever products I put over top too. Danessa killed it with this product. It does doesn't feel heavy it doesn't feel greasy and if you have dry and if you have dry skin like me I think you'll really like this product and then lastly this was in my most recent favorites of the year I had to mention it because it is what I've been using all of the time it's a skincare product but again with drier skin I just prefer more skincare based products as opposed to true makeup primers I think you know that's a whole debate up there. I love a lot of primers, but lately I've been into more skincare to prime. This is the MAC Hyper Real Ceramizer Skin Balancing Hydration Serum. It's so thin, but it has a nice, rich hydration to the skin. I just feel like it's a true boost of hydration before my makeup. So this is really important for me to have in my routine. So of the last year, and I'm just thinking about my collection holistically, what I've been using and loving the most, these three for sure for primers. Now, foundations is always really difficult. I feel like my all-time favorite foundations always get discontinued. <laughs> but I have some major loves here. Here is a little repeat offender. It's been in every top three video that I've done because it's a classic. It's Armani Luminous Silk. It's a really thin foundation that provides a medium coverage. It's matte, but it's not too drying. I wouldn't call it luminous by any means, but the finish does not emphasize the dryness of my skin, nor does it make my skin feel dry and it lasts a long time. This is one of the most reliable foundations in my collection. I'll wear it for every day. I'll wear it for special events. It truly is that versatile, which is why it has made it again in my top three. The next one, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm kind of counting these two as the same thing. It just depends on what look I'm going for. But I think the Dior Forever Foundation line is amazing. I wish they would bring back the Air Flash. But anyways, I do also love their Forever line. Lately, I've been liking Skin Glow because glowy skin is more in, my skin is more dry. But if I have a really long night, I'll use the Forever Matte. Even though I have dry skin, I don't find this to be too drying on my skin. And then sometimes we'll really play around and mix these. Because to me, these are two very similar formulas on a very similar standard of quality just a little bit of a different finish. So depending on what your needs are, I'd recommend either of these. Something about these just make the skin look so smooth and perfected and it's buildable as well. 
And lastly, if you've been watching my videos recently, you probably already called this one Fenty Beauty Soft Lit Foundation. It's a soft matte finish, but not too dry. Almost a little bit satin. It blends itself out. It looks super soft on the skin. It wears a long time. It feels really comfortable. If my friend walked into Sephora with me and they were like, what foundation do you recommend? I would recommend this one. Like Fenty Beauty put something magical in this foundation and if you haven't tried it yet, you need to get a sample at least because there is not a person that I wouldn't recommend this foundation to. I think it's going to work for all skin types and it's so much better than the original foundation. I've gone on about this enough so I'm going to stop but it's that good. Moving on to concealers, we're going to start off with the heavy duty one. This one was also in last year's. It's the Urban Decay Naked Quickie. I love this because it is full coverage. It lasts a long time. It's kind of matte, but it doesn't look too dry on the under eyes. It is my full coverage long wear heavy duty gonna go run a marathon concealer. This is amazing and yeah, way better than Tarte Shape Tape. The next one is full coverage as well, but it's very hydrating, which is a really odd combination, but it just works. It is the Tower 28 Serum Concealer. And it's true, it is like a serum, but most of the serum concealers don't give good coverage. This one does, but you can kind of get what you want out of it. If you apply a tiny bit, you get a lot less coverage. I also think that this is beautiful all over the skin as a foundation, which not a lot of concealers can do. Sometimes they can be too heavy or drying, but this like butter on the skin, super silky, just becomes one with the skin. If you have dry skin, I definitely recommend giving this one a try. And then this one is kind of like the Fenty soft lit of concealers. I have the same sentiments. It's the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. This one, it's like soft, it's matte, it's thick, but in a good way so it fills in the lines of the under eyes. And then also, I can't Think of a person that I wouldn't recommend this to because I think this is for all skin types, all ages. 99% of the people that have commented on my videos about this concealer have loved it. And normally a thicker concealer doesn't sound like it would be very nice on the under eyes, but this one is. Moving into liquid and cream bronzers. This one, a repeat offender here. It is the Rare Beauty Bronzer Stick. One of the smoothest, creamiest, easiest to blend out cream bronzers. I would recommend this to any makeup beginner. Great range of colors and pretty much blends itself out. A completely effortless bronzer stick. So definitely had to put this one in. The next one is a little bit drier than the Rare Beauty, but I recommend it for sweaty people, for oily skin types. It's the Nude Sticks All Over Face Bronze Color. I have mine in the shade Bondi Bay for my complexion. So you'll notice this doesn't blend as nicely as, say, the Rare Beauty, but it almost has more of a powder dry down, so it's going to last longer on those long days. And I prefer a cream bronzer over a powder bronzer because a cream bronzer becomes one with this skin. It just looks more natural, but sometimes those cream bronzers can be abnormally shiny or they can slip and slide on the face or they'll be the first to come off when you start to sweat. Like for me, my sweat starts at my hairline first. So this is really good because I feel like it has that dry down that soaks up a little bit of that sweat and oil. It's been around for a long time, but it's always been one of my favorites. And then last, I have the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancers. This one is interesting because it is a sheer, almost balmy kind of bronzer. The formulation is super unique. I know Physicians Formula was able to dupe this, but not many brands were there before this. And this is beautiful because you can put it on bare skin and it's the perfect bronze for a no makeup makeup day. It doesn't deposit too much color. Normally I wouldn't think I would like that, but just with the more natural lighter makeup that I've been wearing in the heat, this has been my go-to and has ended up becoming an all-time favorite bronzer of mine. And then my top cream and liquid blush formulas. This one was really tough. A lot of cream blushes have come out in the last couple of years. And to be honest, I don't think they're very hard to formulate because there's a lot of great formulas out there. But these are the ones that I've been loving. This first one, Dibs. I kind of bunch this in my head with Persona as well. They're very similar. But I do like the Dibs because it's double-sided with a bronzer as well. I have the shade 2.0. 
1.5 so the blush is the shade cool girl these last a really long time and they have a very easy blend out I've just found myself reaching for this one a lot I don't have much else to say about it and then the other product that I've been using for blush this is technically a highlighter but I love it so much as blush. It's the Dior Forever Glow Maximizers. Particularly, I love combining the shade Rosy and the shade Pink. This gives a pretty metallic, but not too metallic in an unflattering way, glowy cheek without emphasizing like fine lines and stuff that a lot of times a finish like this would have. This also you could put over a mountain of powder and that powder is not going to be messed up at all. I don't know how Dior was able to formulate this so good because normally highlighty products like this over powder or even no powder look terrible on my skin. This is the best liquid luminizer formula out there. I use it as blush, but they also have shades that you can use for highlight as well. And then the last cream blush that I've been loving is from Nude Sticks. Now I've been loving Nude Sticks in general, but the Nudies Matte and Glow Core has been my favorite because it's a little bit wetter and juicier on the cheek. The outer layer here is matte and then the inner layer is like a skincare balmy consistency which gives more of a wet glow to the cheek. These are similar to the bronzer in that you might not feel like they have the easiest blend out, but it's not hard at all, but they last forever, which which is a big issue with cream products. So this has been one of my go-to cream blush formulations that I know I can rely on and that I know will last a long time while still maintaining that pretty hydrated glow to the cheek. So cream bronzers and blushes are done, so let's do powder bronzers and blushes. So the first one, just a powder bronzer in general that is foolproof, is from Hourglass. I tend to grab from the palettes that I have collected over the years. Like the one I use today is Lunar Bronze, but get my hand on any Hourglass bronzer. I love it. It's that baked formulation, so it has a soft glow to it without any glitters. Blends easily. I use this big old Hourglass brush to apply it just because I was setting my cream products. But you can get an easy diffused look with this bronzer. It's creme de la creme when we're talking powder formulations. So love that. That's been a favorite for years and years. And then another one that I love specifically for the tone, but the formulation is also great, is from Pat McGrath. This is the Skin Fetish Divine Bronzer. In particular, I love the shade Nude Honey on my skin tone because it's not too cool, but it's not too warm as well. And at first, I didn't think that this formulation was very special, but I found that it's been a very easy one to grab for. If you want full pigment or a sheer layer of powder here, it's been really great and it lasts a long time as well. And then this one, I don't know that I've talked about it too much on my channel because it's just one of those products that I reach for without thinking about. If I need a good colored, easy to use powder bronzer, I also love this one from Sigma. It's their matte bronzer and I love the shade light. I would say most of the time I'm reaching for it because I know this shade won't be too dark but it also won't be too light. It's a very buttery, easy to blend, easy to use formula. Nothing exciting about it other than it's, it works, okay? It works and I want to reach for it a lot because it's not going to look bad. It's foolproof for me. Nobody talks about their bronzers, but they're really beautiful. And then when we talk about blushes here, I also did demo an Hourglass blush because again, Hourglass blushes keep showing up year to year because they really are the best formulation. Same baked formula. These are nice and marbled and glowy, but not glittery. Today I used the shade Rose Fusion, but any shade and I love it. And you really can have versatility in how much pigment you can get. You can use a soft brush like I did to get a really small wash of the color, very sheer. Or you can use a more dense brush and get a lot of pigment. And then it will always have this soft glow to the skin that I really don't feel like any other brand can replicate. When it comes to purchasing Hourglass powders, I show the palette because it is the best value. And I didn't add this in as a favorite, but I just love their finishing powders as well. If your cheeks ever look overwhelming, you use one of these finishing powders and it just melts and blends all of the powders together. 
So that's a little bonus product for you. Another longtime favorite of mine from the drugstore, like I cannot believe it's from Almay, is their Healthy Hue blushes. You can pick these up at Amazon. It's this very pretty blush with a nice sheen to it. It's a sheen that I feel like not a lot of brands have been able to master because it's not too glittery or glowy, but it's a little bit more sheeny than a lot of blushes out there that are popular, but also <laughs> it's kind of matte. It's very difficult to explain. It's just the perfect glowy sheen of color on the cheek. Super affordable. Now the shade that I love is Nearly Nude. I have other shades from this formula, but there's something about nearly nude that's so special this is truly a luxurious formula in a drugstore price point and i know i look stupid putting that on my nose but it's just gorgeous and you have to try nearly nude it blends really easily and you can also build up the pigment with this if you want and then the last blush formulation that i have it's like again not an exciting formula but one that is just right in the middle of what you want not too matte not too glowy not too pigmented not too sheer it's the newly reformulated nars blushes i mean nars blushes have been a classic for years and years they've been a cult favorite formulation but this new reformulation has done it for me and it's not even that special so that's why it's crazy but I love the color range and they're easy to use. Again, another foolproof, versatile formula. When it comes to setting the face, this will not be of any surprise to you. I always talk about these powders. They always get name dropped. So the first one that I have is the Givenchy Prism Powder. You get four different sides of color that all mesh together as one. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I have the shade number three that I use. One of the most blurring powders on the market. I love a loose setting powder. I feel like they perfect the face, fill in pores like no other finish can. Same sentiments I have about the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder. This one has been in my collection for a lot longer of a time, so I've mentioned this one a lot more. Super finely milled, again, one of the most blurring powders on the market. In terms of the difference between the two, the Givenchy I think has a little bit more of a glow to it. It's not glowy by any means, but if you have more dry skin or you have more mature skin, I would lean towards the Givenchy, and then if you're more on the oily side, lean more towards the Huda Beauty. But as somebody with dry skin, I love both equally as much. And then something with a little bit more body, but still the same level of blurring is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. So this one like fills in the gaps a little bit more because there's more thickness to it. It can cause the makeup to look a little bit more cakey because of the body. But when it comes to like a full coverage look where I want to look beat, this is the one that I will use. Like I use this all the time for events in Miami because it came in there and it did its thing. It's heavy duty, baby, but super blurring and super affordable. Let's talk highlights. I skipped the liquid highlight category because I do not like liquid highlight. The only liquid highlight I love is that one from Dior that I use as a blush. So I picked three powder highlights. This first one is a classic, but I always rely on this for a soft and gentle highlight. Can you guess what I'm gonna talk about? MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Soft and Gentle, and it gives, just as you would expect, that beautiful soft and gentle glow that you cannot tell where the highlighter starts and ends. It just blends into the skin so seamlessly. This is such a classic highlight, and I think it really fits into this trend of that glowy skin for makeup right now, but a lot of people aren't on it because not a lot of people are into powder as much right now. It's all about the cream or liquid makeup, but you can never pull powder out of my routine, and nothing is as smooth to me as MAC Soft and Gentle. So had to mention that one. Another highlighter that has recently launched that is super glowy but super smooth, it's really strange, is the Fenty Beauty Demi Glow Light Diffusing Highlighter. I have so many highlighters in my collection that I love that are really smooth, but there's something to this where it's almost a little bit more creamy in how it applies to the skin. So comparing it to the matte soft and gentle, and it's not bad, but it sits a little bit more on top of the skin whereas this kind of melts into the skin but it still is a powder and it is remarkably glowy 
glowier than you'd expect. Again, super smooth. You can't see where the product starts and ends. And I didn't expect to put such a new product to me in an all-time favorites video, but this deserves its place, really. And then the last highlighter was also in last year's video. It's the Rare Beauty highlighters. These are a little bit more glowy than the two that I've mentioned. I have the shade Exhilarate right now, but I have a couple others in my collection. Again, that really soft, lightweight, silky blend into the cheek, undetectable, harsh edges on the face, just becomes one with the skin, and then you do have options. If you want a little bit of product, you can get a little bit of glow. If you want super glowy, glowing to the gods, this will still give it to you. Rare Beauty just came out with one of the best highlighters Ever. I don't like the blush version of this as much, but with this formula, like, ugh. All right, the last section for complexion category is setting sprays. So the first one, this is for when I need glowy skin, glassy skin. I'm going to go to the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Veil Mist. You'd be surprised at how truly glassy this could make the skin look. Sometimes I'll literally spray this, like, on the high points of my face an inch away, and that right there gives the glass directly to the skin. It's almost like spraying skincare. It's not just water, let me tell you, but then for an all-over glow, I get a little bit further away from my face, but it does exactly as it is named. One for a little bit more of a shot of hydration, a shot to like melt all of the products together. I love the Hourglass Soft Focus Setting Spray, and I do feel like this gives a soft focus finish to the skin. It's almost like a filter in a way whenever I use this. It also is quite refreshing to apply. It's just one of those products where I feel like there's just a little bit of magic in it. I really can't explain what it does, but after I use it, something looks better. And that's also how I feel about probably my most used, most gone through setting sprays, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This is the baby that I go for for longevity. Now this one also I feel like has a little bit of magic in there because when I use it, I feel like my skin looks just a little bit smoother and I can't explain it, but it just does. But not only that, but this does lock in my makeup for a long time. So for a long day, we're reaching for this. That sums it up for complexion. Let's move into the eye category. We're gonna start off with brows with my favorite brow gels. So the first one is my number one favorite. If you're gonna purchase one, it needs to be the Rear Beauty Brow Lamination Gel. This one gives volume to the brows and my brows will listen to this. Wherever I put this in my brows, it will last all day and it does not get dandruffy or white gunkiness either. And there's something about the way that this spoolie brushes out the hairs of my brows where my brows look like they have a little bit more volume to them. My best brow days are with this product and sometimes it just lays the hairs down so good that I don't need to fill in. That's how good this is. Another one that's pretty close, I just picked... <sighs> It's not nonsense. It has a stronger hold than the Rare Beauty. It's just a little bit more wet. It's the ABH Brow Freeze Gel, so if you need something heavy duty, I definitely recommend it. Mine's a little bit old, so it's getting a little bit goopier with time, but this one also lays the brows down amazing. It didn't look so great in today's demo because I'm a dummy and did my foundation first, so this is one where you want to put this on your face before you put anything else on your face, or since it's wet, it will combine with the foundation and look weird. But if you just apply this on bare skin, Wherever your brows lay, it will lay. It definitely leaves a cast on the brows that will keep it in place, but it's super strong hold, which is something that I look for because my brows tend to want to live their own life, go in their own direction, and I'm not, I'm not going to tolerate that. And then the last one, this one I don't use as much anymore, but I used it all the time when I lived in Miami because I was profusely sweating 24-7, and this kept my brows tamed and in place. It's the Refi Brow Sculpt. Now there is a caveat to this. Sometimes you can get a little dandruffy in the brows, which is why the Rare Beauty is better, but this one lays the hair down. You can run a marathon with this. If I were to run a marathon, which I never would, I would use this one. So this is like extremely heavy, heavy, heavy duty, but it, it passed my Miami sweatiness. So it's a good one. 
And then brow pencils. Now, this was the year I fell out of love with brow pencils because the brow gels are so good. I am very minimal in my needs for brow pencils. So I just want something nice and tiny to fill right in the areas that look a little bit sparse. But my brow gels surprisingly do most of the work. So something that's been perfect for that is the Kosas Brow Pop Nano. And baby girl, is it nano. Can you even see it? It's so tiny, but it it's the perfect size to fit right in between the hairs where I need it to without disrupting the product and gel in the brows. Phenomenal. Probably go through this quicker than water, but nano size. Now for something a little bit bigger, a little bit more heavy duty, this is where I'm like, depends on the day. Recently, I've been using the NYX micro brow pencil. Again, it's small, just small enough. It's definitely bigger than the Kosas. But it deposits more pigment, so if I'm using a brow gel that has a little bit of a harder time accepting a brow pencil over top, this one's good because it's a little bit softer, so it has no problem working over the brow gel. So just with how I've been doing the brows, it has changed my preferences for brow uh, pencils because... I do the brow gel first, so I need to have a specific type of pencil to go over the brow gel, and the NYX one works really great. I mean, it's a classic. It's a good one from the drugstore. But then on days where I need a quick fill, I'm not so focused on the brow gel. I just want a quick and dirty brow. I do want a thicker tip. So what I go for is the IT Cosmetics Brow Power. So this one is definitely on the thicker side, but I like it because it's a drier formula, which is why I struggled to swatch it for you. But I like a dry formula because I feel like it looks more natural in the brows. Sometimes too creamy of a pencil can over blend and make your brows look really blocky. So this one is nice and dry, how I like it, but also thick. Moving into eyeshadows, this was not the year of eyeshadows, unfortunately. I definitely got in my like beige, neutral brown era, simple eye makeup. Not a bad thing. For my people who love colors, yes, a bad thing. But I've just felt really confident with simple eyes like this. So one of my favorites for a quick and dirty look is the YSL Couture Mini Clutch in the shade 100. This quality is unbeatable. It is a truly luxurious formulation, meaning it's a little bit softer on the pigment, but it kind of blends itself out. None of these shades are really truly matte, so they're gonna be really flattering on more mature eyelids, and they just all blend together like butter for the perfect, most flattering, simple eye makeup look. And I'm even shocked when it came down to it that this did reach my top three. But I'd be lying if I didn't say that this wasn't an all-time favorite of mine for the season of eyeshadow that I'm currently using. So, love this. These next two, not surprising. Still in my neutral eye era, but... Can never leave my girl Natasha Denona behind. These two palettes have been go-tos for me for the style of looks that I've been doing. Very simple one and done, two and done looks. The Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. This one's a little bit on the cooler side, but still kind of pinky. It actually is a very unique tone to it. You can get so many looks with this in the neutral family. You can get smoky eyes. I love this because of the shimmers in here. They make the easiest glowy look all over the eye and then kind of similar is the glam palette it has some different undertones here you can get a little bit more depth there's more true browns here some more gray tone shimmers here for the eyelid so both of these hands in hand i've been reaching for pretty blindly over the last couple of years these are repeat, repeat, repeat favorites. The Natasha Denona formula just cannot be beat. If you want to spend a little bit of extra money on a really good quality eyeshadow palette that's going to last a long time, that you know is reliable quality, definitely look into these Natasha Denona palettes. If you're new to my channel, like I'm a stan, I review every palette she comes out with because they are at the top of the game, top-notch eyeshadow formulas. So of the last year and beyond, these three have hit the mark for me as my top three. I did also want to include a single eyeshadow category because I feel like the quick one and done eyeshadows are really popular. And I have some really nice formulas to mention. So the first one is a specific color. 
If you really love a glittery lid, you are going to love the Half Magic Glitter Puck in the shade Dopamine Sparkle, which is the only shade that they have in, um, in Half Magic. I'm begging you. We need more colors of this. This is insane, to say the least. It literally almost feels wet and cooling. I've done a good number of looks with this when I lived in Miami to go out to beauty events because I knew this would look stunning. I considered using it actually pretty recently. Anyways, it doesn't have any fallout. I don't use any glitter glue or anything with this and it's like wet glitter, so not chunky either. It's like chunkier glitter, but it doesn't look chunky. It's perfect. It's just right for a glittery look that I'm going for. So dying for more colors of this. And then something a little bit more refined. <laughs> it's thinner on the eyelid. It would be better for more mature eyelids and it's more refined glitters as well are the Hourglass Scattered Light Glittered Eyeshadows. I showed you the shade Smoke, which is one of my favorites. This one will give that really pretty sparkly look to the eyelid but it's really thin so it doesn't feel heavy on the eyes these are really special they don't crease at all either they're feather light on the eyelids as well if you love a glimmery shimmery kind of shadow i definitely recommend looking into these hourglass ones now with these single shadows you know the prices add up quickly but these are one where they're worth it they don't really dry out i've had a few in my collection for multiple years and they're still pretty much good as new and then I did want to include an eyeshadow stick, and it truly is a classic. It's the best of the best, and that has to be the Laura Mercier eyeshadow sticks. My only thing is they don't have enough really glimmery shades, really metallic shades, but these last a really long time. They're super easy to use, smooth and creamy, and they're not going to crease on you, even though they are kind of that cream formulation. If you're looking for super quick eye pencils to just throw on, excuse me, eye crayons. You gotta go with the classic brand. Laura Mercier just has the best. Now, eyeliners. I have stopped using altogether liquid liners. They're just too intense for the looks that I've been doing. So if I'm not using eyeshadow as my eyeliner, then I'm using these three pencils. So the first one, now this is half liquid liner. It's from Tarte. It's the Double Take Awake. And the liquid liner on this is quite impressive. But I'm talking about the cream side of this. This will last all day in the waterline. I have not touched it. It's not faded at all. And I'm talking it will go on for hours. So the best longest lasting waterline eyeliner is this one right here. But not far behind for lasting all day in the waterline is from the brand Lancome. This is truly my favorite pencil liner ever out there. This is going to be great for mature eyelids because it has the easiest glide. You know, sometimes when it's really creamy, it can actually have the opposite effect and start sticking onto mature eyelids. This one will just glide and then you have a moment where it's creamy enough to use the sponge applicator to blend it out. But once it sets, it sets. And I'm talking even in the tight line. You can line your tight line with this, let it dry, and then once it dries, it's not even gonna transfer to the lower lash line. Doesn't transfer if you have hooded eyelids as well. The best pencil liner out there. And then another one, this one's a little bit more softer. It's a little bit more true to an eyeshadow in a stick form. It's from Jones Road, it's the best pencil. And so what's special about these for me is they're very easy to manipulate, more like a powder, not like a cream. So this is like a powder eyeshadow pencil. And I love it because I love using eyeshadows as eyeliner. So this is kind of the hybrid between the two mascaras it's important to know i'm not working with much i have those asian genetics of really stick straight lashes but these ones all three of them hold curl as well and i really feel like they do give my lashes a little bit of something something like you see it it doesn't look amazing but that this is amazing for me. <laughs> so the first one that I have is going to give the most volume of the three. It's the Lanco Monster Big. A newer discover for me actually, but I've fallen in love. I would say in terms of getting my lashes as big as possible, it's going to be this one. And it dries relatively quickly so I can curl it and it has a good hold when it comes to curl as well. So it's still lightweight enough. The wand intimidated me because I do have smaller lashes, but it still works great. So for volume, Monster Big. 
Now, I love this one for a little bit more separation, doing a little bit of more artwork with my lashes, if you will, because this will really separate them out and brush them out. It's the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara, one of my all-time favorites on the market as well. The definition that this gives is unmatched. And it also holds a curl, which is really important to me. I have lawn comb on this side. The lawn comb is doing a little bit of a better job with the curl hold. But this one is so great for the length and definition. And then lastly, I needed to put in my favorite tubing mascara. I feel like this gives me the most separation and length as well in a tubing form. It's the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. This also holds a curl the best out of these three. So this one I can get my lashes standing straight up to the sky and it will remain like that all day. Just give it its time to dry. And then the best thing with it being a tubing mascara is that it's so easy to take off at night. You just can't beat it. This is my summer mascara because you know how we've been getting hot and sweaty. Like this one will last. It certainly will. So that sums it up for eyes. We're going to finish off with the lips category. It's really interesting and difficult to categorize lips nowadays because I feel like there are so many hybrid products. Like it's a gloss, a balm, and an oil all in one. Very difficult. So I kind of did like a, a color product category, a treatment category, and an oil slash gloss category. So let's start off with lip liners. Nothing new here. I mean, these are the trifecta of what I've been talking about for years. So this is a category that stay the same. Pat McGrath Labs, particularly the shade Contour, but pick any shade that like tickles your fancy. Contour is my favorite for a bigger lip look. I actually have contour on right now. Very cool toned. And then from Charlotte Tilbury, I love her more pinky colors. My favorite is Super Size Me. So this one's good in the summer when I want a brighter lip look that's still quite natural but again any shade I love I would say Charlotte Tilbury probably has my favorite shade range pillow talk pillow talk medium to iconic nude there are so many iconic lip liners that I use from her all the time and the best thing about these two in particular and why I love them so much is they have a very creamy application but they also set down and don't budge I didn't give them enough time to dry but these are some of the longest lasting lip liners in my collection. And then the third one that I have, I love the color range. This one doesn't set down like the other two, but that's okay because it's really easy to manipulate and blend out and very easy to like spot use. It's the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil. In particular, you'll catch me wearing Anywhere Caffeine, which is a little bit warmer, but it is similar to contour here. One of the most versatile colors in my collection and super easy to use. This one's a little bit more powdery comparing it to the other two, which is like a gel almost. It's like a creamy gel that sets down. This one's more powdery and I still think that there's a place for this formulation in the lip liner market. Next category is lip colors because you know what? Like lip colors are not as popular nowadays. So I have two true bullet lipstick formulas and then a liquid lipstick formula in this category. So we'll start off with the best lipstick formulation of all time, in my opinion, and it's the Charlotte Tilbury Kissing Formulation. So these are a lipstick that have a little bit of a glow to them. It's not like one of those lip glossy balms, but it's not a flat lipstick. They're a little bit thicker in nature. They're not the smoothest or creamiest because they last a long time. And it's really hard to get a product that is shiny like this, but still lasts a long time. One of my favorite nudes is Hepburn Honey. How beautiful is this shade? I also swatched just for fun the shade 90s pink, but I couldn't pick just one shade to share with you because in general, the kissing formula from Charlotte Tilbury is it. It's the magic. Another lipstick formula that I love, this just feels so luxe, it's from Merit. I love their lipsticks. They have the best in the market too, behind Charlotte Tilbury, of course. So this is their signature lip. They do have matte ones now. I love the original formulation. This one's a little bit of a darker color that I'm swatching for you, but they're really thin, very hydrating. They have an effortless glide across the lips, but not one that's overly creamy. You still have some control with this, which I think makes it really special. Everything about this screams luxe to me. I don't know what Merit did, but yeah, this is like a luxury lipstick. It's a lot lighter, it's a lot smoother than the Charlotte Tilbury, but it still has enough grab to have some good longevity as well. And then lastly, 
Lastly, I had to add in my heavy duty option. This is like my marathon makeup as well. This is what I'm wearing on my lips. The Maybelline Superstay Liquid Lipsticks. These are the best liquid lipsticks. I'm always reaching for these when I know I need my color to stay. Like if you forget to pack your lip products and you need to run out and grab something, grab one of these. They don't get crackly really. I mean, I wouldn't recommend reapplying this, but you don't really have to. That's the beauty of these because that's how long lasting they are. The best, best, best longest lasting liquid lipsticks without giving you that prune feeling on the lips. Okay lip treatment category. I like made up my own little category here, but all three of these products are my favorite for conditioning slash glossing. So the first one, Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm. It is like a lip butter balm, really. It gives a really pretty glow to the lips, makes the lips look nice and juicy, and is really healing when your lips are very dried and chapped. There's something about the longevity of this as well that it stays on for a really long time, which is great because it literally feels healing to my dry peeling lips when I use this. And then this next one is very similar feeling. Maybe not as healing, but I love this one just as much. It's the Road Peptide Lip Tint. I mean, these are these are the duo right here. Some of the most popular, most purchased product has to be in the last year has to be these two. But this one comes in more fun colors. It's a little bit more makeup-y if you get the tint, which is what I have. But the regular ones I also really, really like. I haven't had a problem with grittiness, but I've kind of stopped using, I think it's the untinted ones that get gritty. I've been using the tinted ones because I like them for makeup, but I find them both to be really hydrating and nourishing to the lips. So I use those all the time. They are always, always in my purse. And then lastly, I haven't heard enough people talk about these, but I love the glossiness that this adds to my lips and it's also very hydrating. From Fenty Skin, it's their conditioning lip oil. I guess this should have gone in my lip oil category, but I decided to put it in the lip treatment category. Who cares? I just wanted to talk about it. It fit best in this one to make it a trio here. First of all, I love this big fat wand. There's something about it where I love applying it. It smells like a treat. It's super duper hydrating to the lips as well. I find it to be more hydrating than any of the lip oil category options that I have. So that's why I did put it in my treatment category, but it has the treatment of a lip mask, but the glow of a lip oil. Incredible, I love this product so much and then the cherry scent of this is literally the cherry on top. An incredible product. And then the last category that I have here is my gloss slash lip oil category. The first one, no surprise to you here, my all-time favorite lip oil on the market is the Lip Comfort Oil from Clarins. This is the juiciest, the wettest, but still long-wearing, still thick lip oil out there. It's better than Dior, and I love the Dior too. I'm gonna be mentioning it next but I love the colors that they have here. Get the darker ones, cause they're really gonna give that like just bitten kind of look as well. Thickest, wettest, juiciest, still not sticky, long wearing, love this lip oil. My favorite, 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 but not far behind is, I know a lot of people think it's overhyped, but no, I just think there's something special to it. The Dior Lip Glow Oils, I love these. Don't buy multiple colors cause they're also sheer. That's something I will say about it, but these are also super thick, wet, and juicy. It's just like a, a tiny notch down below the Clarins. <sighs> but also, I love them. And then lastly, this I guess is a gloss. It's the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss. And what I've learned from this testing and all of these lip products is I love a very thick, glossy lip color that's still smooth. But the most important thing that I look for is that it fills in the lines of my lips. And this was quite literally formulated to do that. They call it literally, you're like, forget your filler. This is gonna plump and smooth the lines. And it does just that. So this one is also quite glowy, not as glowy as the other two, but it's thick, it's nourishing, and probably the most line smoothing of the three. I would say. So this is my all-time favorite gloss right now. I mean, I still love my Pat McGrath, don't get me wrong, but I have not been able to put this down because I feel like it's a hybrid between a gloss and a lip oil, which lip oils I'm so into. 
We did it, you guys. Those are my top three favorite products in every single makeup category. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because I do do this video annually if you are into it. And it's kind of a big deal for me to break down my products and literally single out my favorite children of my large, large amount of children. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Definitely check out last year's if you're looking for some other good product recommendations. Still, those products are products that I stand by and I think are great from last year. Take a moment, narrow it down. What is your top one product in every category? I would love to hear it in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Subscribe and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.